Yeah. This is bedrock. Yeah. This is the bedrock here. All the rocks here, all the big ones are all the same thing. Oh. The, when they built the road, they just kind of skirted the top of the, uh, the bedrock. Oh, it's limestone. So this is the same bedrock that Hayward is on. And this is why we have the excellent water in our area. Some of the, uh, the, 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 uh, pretty sure this isn't a glacial erratic, that this mm -hmm. isn't a, a boulder brought down from Canada, let's say. Mm -hmm. The glaciers didn't bring down huge rocks like this from Canada because they would get broken up in route. Mm -hmm. So the, the large rocks like this are more local. So oh. they didn't come very far. Mm -hmm. And there's other ones like it here too. So it's not just that rock, but there's other gabbro rocks around here too. This one here, this one here is a quartzite that tells a story. You've got layers. Um, do you see how they, there's pebbles of quartz in the quartzite here? The little pebbles of white quartz in the quartzite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the uh, water, this was a stream deposit. The water was moving faster here. So it, it washed the uh, mud and the sand away and you ended up with pebbles, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what happens when water moves faster. Here you have a layer of sand. The water slowed down. I don't know which way it went, but the water was slower here, so you just ended up with sand. Here you have a layer of shale or pipestone, which is mud. Yeah. So basically the water stopped moving for a short while and laid, laid a layer of clay or mud down here. And then it sped up again, then another layer of mud. So what you have here is a weather record, you know, of, of different rain events. You know, this was a big storm, you know, just brought all kinds of gravel. Special uh, spiritual significance mm -hmm. to a lot of people. And I, I can see why. I mean, here you have this giant Unusual, rock in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Um, kind of like Ayers Rock in Australia, how significant mm -hmm. that is to the Aboriginal people there. Are here, I was saying, this, this is the same chemical composition as the lava that you'd have up near Duluth. The black lava called basalt. The same lava is in Hawaii. It's the same chemical composition as that. It's what's called mafic lava. Mafia, mafic, black, dark, you know, you know sinister. Mm -hmm. Think mafia, mafic. Uh, so it's dark lava. This came from underneath North America. It is melted ocean crust and worked its way up through North America as North America was was tearing itself apart. There was a rift here called the Mid-Continental Rift. 800 million to about a billion years ago, North America started stretching apart like this from, from heat welling up underneath. And uh, just like a, what yeah. was happening in Africa nowadays, in East Africa, the Great Rift Valley, it was exactly the same thing that was happening here. So, so it stretched, mm -hmm. a, a valley formed with a series of lakes, just like uh, Lake Tanganyika and Lake Malawi in Africa, the Great Rift Lakes in Africa. There was a series of rift lakes here. One of them was Proto Lake Superior, mm -hmm. the, the first Lake Superior. Um, so as this, this, the heat was coming up, stretching the crust apart, kind of like in a pot, think a pot of soup. You got heat coming up in the middle and that the film on the top of the soup goes off to the sides like that. That's what was happening. The heat was coming up, stretching the crust apart like that. And so uh, along the sides of this, this rift, where the, this rift valley, the lava would come up every once in a while. Uh, sometimes the lava, the, the magma, excuse me, wouldn't reach the surface. There's a huge rock out in the middle of nowhere. Now, what happened after this glacier was dumped here, or the, the rock was dumped here by the glacier, it started getting weathered. And so you get the, the, the chemical changes on the outside of, and, and uh, the turning it, you know, lightening it up and, and changing the minerals. Uh, so that's why we had to look where it was split in order to actually see what's inside. So why does a rock like this start splitting? You see the cracks in it. Those weren't there originally. They, they start as a blueberry flower like you know, bell, white bells, but then as they ripen they, they turn upright like that. It's a, Indian pipes they're called. And uh, they're, they're in a heap family. They're related to blueberries and to azaleas and things like that. Yeah. Dig down. Um, there's, I don't I hate to ruin it, let me find one that where the soil is loose here. But there's peanuts in the ground, and they're edible for people too, not just hogs. Yeah. Hog peanuts. There's, there's the hog peanuts. They form kind of like a real peanut does. Hog peanut. Hog palm. 
This is wintergreen. This is a type of crustose lichen. And this is a foliose lichen. It just the, describes the body forms. So this is like a leaf. See how little little black stripes there? Oh. Those are the spore structures, the sporangia. So this is a fertile. This is a fertile bracken fern, and you this hardly ever see that. Fern. And that's that's the same plant, but just a normal leaf. You break a leaf Kansas. and crunch it, tansy, and smell it. It's good. Yeah. Ooh, it smells like. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah. You either love it or hate it. Tansy. It yep. smells like yeah, licorice. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a dog bane. Dog bane. Spring that, dog bane. Is that native? That's native. Pretty good. More. So these, these are glacial erratics brought down probably from the Pinocchio range. And dropped under two species, white and red. This is baneberry. It's one of our few actual poisonous plants. That's why it's called baneberry. Uh, so it, it's a poisonous plant. But if it gets white berries, they call them doll's eyes too. And, uh, they're little evergreen plants. These are the leaves here. And they call them shin leaf because they were used as a poultice for bruises, like you bruise your shins, right? So shin leaf and family. But it smells good. So. It's not invasive, it's not aggressive. I'm just here and there. It's called what? Prunella? Behind it with the tall white things coming out of the top. Oh, that's a, those are the flowers. They have white milkweed flowers. Oh, that's a woodland milkweed? Oh, white yeah. milkweed. It grows in the woods. Mm -hmm. Wait, it. Okay. The berries stay on there, and Perfect they're edible it. berries. They're, they don't taste like anything. There's some okay. some seeds in there. You say they were used for coffee? Or no, but I'm wondering if, since it is such a close relative. I mean, if if you're familiar with a coffee plant, let me look at it. The same kind of leaf arrangement and the same berries. This is an interrupted fern. They uh, recently, within the last 15 years or so, they found fossils of this fern in Antarctica from 200 million years ago, from when it was part of Pangaea. So this fern is a living fossil. It's as old as ginkgo trees from before the dinosaurs, when the dinosaurs were just little chicken-sized things. And it's called interrupted because? It, it, it's called interrupted because the fertile fronds are right in the middle of the north. Just right at the end this of the This is the lady fern. This is the exact same fern as well. How can you tell this is a lady fern? What, what oh, gosh. It's a wearing skirts. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the finely cut. Uh, it, well, the spores are of a certain shape and they're not right in plant. I'm going to pick one. Made in here, fair. Ferns. I'm going to pick one of these fronds. Oh, and it, they're really tough. Take my word for it. See the, the red, uh, see the thin black stalk here? The uh, Indian women used to weave baskets out of this. That clump right there. This is all made in here. The big, dead white trim. It's huge. Yeah, healthy. Bainberry. Could be. The blood of the people. The blood of the people's wow. pets. That's what they made their peace pipes. Their killer hats out of. Good. Uh, it has flowers that look like little yellow lilies. And then they get Neat. beautiful blueberries. I had a pet blue jay. <laughs> <laughs> we got gooseberries here. We got some berries. Yeah. You can't see that. We, we would make buy our green ones too. <laughs> You can, uh, and it comes up like an eagle claw. That's what the Latin name, aquilegium, comes, comes from the name eagle, right? Because it looks like an eagle claw coming up. And that's when it's harvested. The problem with eating it, even though it's a traditional food, it's highly carcinogenic. It causes cancer. So do you see the sparkle? Yeah, see the sparkle? Pipestone is like a brick. Because it's made out of clay, it doesn't sparkle. But the quartzite sparkles like that. But if you feel it, that's why I had you feel the sandstone, mm -hmm. the Mount Simon sandstone. You can feel the sand. Here, it's smooth. Or it's bumpy, but it's, you don't feel any sand grains. Because when this was cracked, it, it cracked right through the sand grains. They're, So all this was sand brought down from the Pinocchio Range by the rivers. And, but they weren't like modern rivers. The, the, because there wasn't any vegetation, it, these were huge, wide, braided streams with channels that constantly were changing back and forth like that. This is a fossil river channel that got filled in. So this was one of the channels in cross-section, split in half.
both both have the uh this is balsam this is balsam fir hemlock. this is hemlock underneath hemlock, you like they're more of a bluish green the main green, and the other thing balsam is, makes like a cross see how it makes a cross oh, yeah. you gotta get a crucifix at the partridge oh. berry in, in bloom and then the boy scouts mind the pipe song the whole thing. You see the ripple marks and the swamp currants. And they got red berries on them. See? Swamp currants. Yeah, this is the southernmost thimble berries that I know of. They are, they're real common on Lake Superior. But I don't know of any farther south than this. Ooh, they're uh, they're native to the Pacific Northwest, so uh, Oregon, Washington, over to over to Idaho and Glacier Park in Montana, and then the only other place they show up is right around Lake Superior. Mm -hmm. In here and and here. I mean, it's a uh, it's a traditional cough syrup. It's made from the running rootstock. The What's rice. that called? Mm -hmm. Used to make cough syrup. Hair cat moss. Hair cat moss. It's a hamburger bun that's the king bully. So when they're young, it's probably full of worms by the way. When they're young, they're delicious and they're very, very expensive. King. And then the larvae it lives in the middle and makes this gall which uh, protects it from predators and it just okay. kind of feeds on the, the sap mm -hmm. of the oak. And then when it's ready to uh, to pupate, see a little hole. It comes mm -hmm. out of the, makes a little hole and comes out, mm -hmm. and away comes the gall fell with the leaves in the fall. Mm -hmm. Gall. What is what is pipestone? It's you know that red clay on Lake Superior. Yeah. If you would squeeze that really really hard, you'd end up with pipestone. That's what it is. It's metamorphosed red clay. 1.7 billion years ago, the sun was shining on it. It was actually the sun. So this is the blood of the people. This is the prized pipestone. Of course, this one has been dried out, so it's not very usable. But uh, in the quarry itself, this would have been used for the for the calumets, for the peace pipes, where the mm -hmm. you know warring tribes got tired of that. They would smoke their. So, why do you say it's a classic structure? Because it typically breaks a cubic or square. Oh, okay. Whereas the quartzite, you see a lot of triangle of that was. The surface or the, the bottom of a stream. You could have walked on that almost two billion years ago. Which to Different me that's the most amazing true. thing to have. The surface of the earth right there. That was the surface at that Wouldn't it little that's stingy. Sting, yep. It's a, okay, and you've probably told us what this is. Weedy fern. And this one is similar, yeah. but it's evergreen. This is the evergreen yeah. wood fern. And this used to be collected for florist greens. Okay. Wood fern? Wood fern. Uh, basically, way you can tell the difference is that, well, besides the frond darkness and the, the more teeth there, you see the base of the evergreen wood fern yeah. has, has these brown scales, while the lady fern has oh, just doesn't. much fewer. Yeah. It looks like a young balsam, maybe. <clears throat> the way you, the way you tell it from a balsam or hemlock, when it's not making the red berries, the females make those red berries that are sweet and edible. But the way you tell is it, it creeps on the ground and the color of green is different. It's got this different green and underneath, you notice it's not blue or whitish, it's kind of a yellow green. But the uh, six mile goes up by 1700. So. This is quartzite rock, right? This is all quartzite. This came out of a uh, Blue Hills quarry. Wow. A lot of pipes. Oh, look at you. Nice, Grotto. Is it using those same stones, quartz stones? 